All right, so yeah, why do you know Harry Potter? Because there's a sport in Harry Potter in which it's magic, obviously, so they fly around on brooms. And then people at Middlebury College uh, adapted that. And why you don't know Harry Potter? You're 12 and you haven't read Harry Potter yet? Okay, homework assignment. You got to read Harry Potter. It's very important for your life. Uh, okay, well, I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, I'll just go a little more in depth than I would have if you were familiar with the terms. Uh, so Middlebury College adapted this sport and... Um, obviously we don't fly on brooms because we're not magic peoples, um, but we do, uh, run around on brooms. Uh, they're now, um, they're now PVC pipe just cause they're cheaper, more durable and they don't hurt you. Um, so yeah, you run around a broom with a broom between your legs and you hold it with, um, so you run around with the broom between your legs, uh, you hold it with one hand, um, and then if you're holding a ball, you can hold that in the other. Um, if you want to catch with two hands, you can just hold the broom up between your legs and just catch with two hands. But if you'll want to run, you'll probably want to, you know, hold the broom with one hand and run again. Um, so there is a scoring ball, um, which is called the quaffle, um, but it's a partially deflated volleyball. Uh, so that you have the quaffle, uh, which is a partially deflated so that you can grip it with one hand. Um, so that's the scoring ball and each side has three chasers um, and one keeper. So on defense, the keeper plays like a goalie and they guard three hoops. And the hoops in Quidditch aren't like basketball where they're... Uh... Actually, while I'm doing this, I might as well just like shoot around and practice my shot timing. Come on up. Um... So it's like throwing a football through a tire and there's three hoops and they're at different heights. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and you can sh uh, throw the ball or dunk the ball if you get close enough uh, from either side of the hoops. Um, so right there would be like a hoop here and then there would be like a hoop here and there would be like another hoop here. And the middle one would be tall and the right one's like medium and then the left one is short. And then so the chasers, uh, and the key so the on defense the keeper plays goalie so on defense the keeper will stand like right here and like block the hoops and then like if there's a loose ball they'll go get it uh, and then their three chasers the three chasers will play defense and then the offensive team will have their keeper will come up and play offense too so on offense the keeper will play offense too and then there's the three chasers uh, and they'll all pass the ball to each other and they'll try and maneuver around and try and score through the hoops. Um, and the plays are a lot like basketball, actually. Um, and you don't have to dribble like in basketball. You can just run with it. Uh, and you can like hand off to people. You can pass to people. Uh, you can just try and run by everybody and just score through the hoops. Uh, and if you score through the hoops, um, you get 10 points. Oh, you can also go behind the hoops. It won't let me. Oh, actually, it will let me come behind the hoops. Can I shoot? Oh, it didn't work. Okay, but in Quidditch, you can score behind the hoops, too. Um, and so if the game were entirely these four players on each team, it wouldn't be super different from rugby. Um, but Quidditch also has um, each side, in addition to the three chasers and one keeper, uh, they have two beaters, uh, and they have bludgers. They're just dodgeballs. Um, so while the... Um, qualf while the um, Chasers and keepers are trying to score with the volleyball. Uh, the beaters have dodgeballs, uh, and if they can throw them at people. If you get hit by a dodgeball, it's like the equivalent in the magical sport where you got hit by a cannonball, you would fall to the ground, and then you would get on your broom and fly back up. So to like mimic that, um, if like LeBron James was trying to score on these hoops and he got beat, he would have to drop the ball if he was holding one, he would have to dismount his broom, and he would have to run all the way back to his hoops touch up to his hoop, and then he could rejoin play. And then, yeah, he can just rejoin play then. Um, so the beaters are incredibly powerful because they can use the dodgeballs to knock people out of the play. 
uh, and they can be used on offense and defense, but it's easier to just think about them as defense first. Um, and so each side has two beaters, and there are three dodgeballs um, in play at any given time. So at all times, or almost all times, um, one team will have two bludgers, two dodgeballs, and one team will only have one bludger. Uh, and since the bludgers are so powerful, having what's called bludger control, having two bludgers, uh, is really important. Um, so a lot of times, like the simplest way to play Quidditch is that um, you'll the chaser the so the on defense, the keeper will guard the hoops, and then the chasers would play man-to-man -man defense just like you do in basketball against three of the four players, right? Because the keepers on um, the other team's playing offense too. So they have four offensive players and um, where the offensive has four players running around and then the defense has three players to mark up on them and then one goalie because they want someone by the hoops. If they didn't have someone by the hoops and the other team can make long shots, then they're going to get scored on. Um, so that's going to leave one t uh, person open for the offense. Um, but the beaters uh, won't play man-to-man -man defense like basketball. Uh, they'll usually play, they'll kind of like hover around in the middle. And then when the offense like makes a pass, then they'll try and run over and hit them with the dodgeball real quick before they can get the ball. And then they'll have to drop the ball and then their team's chasers or keeper can pick up the ball and then they can run and try to score this way. Did this make sense? Is this LeBron James single person demo of Quidditch working? That was a bad shot, but he made it anyway. Um, so yeah, you can do more complicated like defense, but that's the most simplistic way to play Team Quidditch. Um, right, so that's the main part of the game, is uh, those six players. So there's one keeper, three chasers for four Quaffle players, and they're doing the traditional sport thing where they're like passing around and playing defense and trying to score through the hoops. And then the beaters are pretty unique because they're using the dodgeballs to knock people out and try and get possession for their team. Um, and then goals are worth 10 points. And then at the 18 minute mark, there's another ball sort of that comes into game. They enter at the mid part of the field. Uh, and that's called the snitch. You've probably heard of the snitch from Harry Potter. I hope this isn't boring and easy to follow. Try my best. Um, so the snitch, so in the magical Harry Potter game, the snitch is a little flying golden ball that flutters in the air and it's super fast. And then um, one person on each team, a seventh person, uh, will be assigned to catch the snitch for their team. Um, and then that would be worth, in the magical world, it was 150 points because J.K. Rowling wanted Harry to be the guy to get the snitch and he wanted her to be the, him to be the hero, so he made the sn she made the snitch absurd. Um, in our game, the snitches were 30 points so that because we want the rest of the game to matter. Um, so at the 18 minute mark, the snitch will come on the field. It's not a flying little golden ball in the real world. Uh, it is a person. They're decked out in yellow so that you can differentiate them between either of the two teams. So yellow is banned in Quid for Quidditch teams so that you can tell who the snitch is. And what they do is they got a little tail velcroed onto their butt. Um, the homemade version is if you take a tennis ball and you put it in a tube sock and you tuck that into the back of your pants and you let it hang like 10 inches. Uh, and then so the snitch would come onto the pitch at the 18 minute mark and uh, one seeker from each team would run over from the other side and they're going to try catching the snitch. Um, the, how this works is that the snitch doesn't have a broom. The snitch has two arms. Um, and the Seekers only have one arm. So that makes it a lot harder to, for them to get around and grab the Snitch. And often what the Snitch does is that uh, they're often, sometimes they're runners and they just like run away and they're hard to catch. More often they're more of a wrestler type and like people will come running at them to try and grab the Snitch and they'll just take them and throw them. Oh, I didn't mean to do that, but that was pretty timely. That was funny. And the game gets super interesting at the end because, especially if the game's within 30 points, and so it's in snitch range, and that you know either team can win or fo force overtime by pulling the snitch, uh, is that each team has a decision to make. Do they want to take their beaters and focus on the quaffle game to try and keep their lead, or maybe they need to get back in the lead? Or they can take their beaters and focus on the snitch game and beat the other team's seekers. 
so that they can't just get the snitch. Um, so it's an incredibly dynamic, complex game. Uh, no, I play Quidditch in real life. There is a Harry Potter World Cup video game, but uh, it's probably my profile. Oh, yeah, it's my profile pick. That's me playing Quidditch in real life. Uh, I'm a chaser. There's also backyard Quidditch. So I can explain that in a minute, too. I'm almost done with this. Um, so, yeah, I play Quidditch in real life, and it's, like, fun like nothing else. Um, and I guess that's most of the game, yeah. You never have, uh, you never knew people actually done that, but you are a Harry Potter fan. It, it's really big. Uh, this summer was the fourth World Cup. Oh my god, this is the most chill thing ever. I'm just like, chilling, derping around, shooting baskets, and telling people about Quidditch. Like, what could be better? Uh, yeah, so this summer was the fourth World Cup. It was held in Florence, Italy, and 29 nations attended. Alright, thank you so much for watching, guys. Hope you were interested in Quidditch. Hope you like the links I sent.